Hello and Assalamualaikum First of all, I would like to introduce myself My name is Muhammad Hazza Faiz Bezu Kifli I'm from group 3 alongside my group mate Which are Auni, Fakiha, Alif, Intan and Mira We will be presenting our topic which is FDI Foreign Direct Investment for our subject where our lecturer is Madam Khaleda Binti Abdul Hafiz So, I would like to start with definition of FDI What is FDI? FDI is a foreign direct investment is a purchase of an interest in a company by a company or investor located outside its borders Generally, the term is used to describe a business decision to acquire substantial stake of foreign business or to buy in outright in order to expand its operation to a new region for a less complicated definition, I would like to know all of you to know that FDI also known as a cross-border investment made by a resident in one company and enterprise in another company. For another word, FDI is a direct investment into a production in a country by a company located in another country by either buying a company in the target country or by expanding operation of an existing business in that country. Why FDI is important? So I would like to tell you about the main objective of a company where want to do FDI. They wanted to do FDI because of resource seeking, market seeking, efficiency seeking and favorable government by policy seeking. The resource is the most important thing in FDI. So what is the resource? Resource seeking is the mo motive of companies to invest abroad specific resources at lower cost. First resources are physical resources, for example, palm tree, coconut oil, and crude oil. The se second resource is cheap labor, for example, manufacturing companies produced in China, Bangladesh, and Vietnam because of low cost labor. The third resource is technology, transfer, and management skills. For example, Japan has their own engineering software in India, fashion in Italy. Let's continue with Aoni Masara. For the next part of issue foreign direct investment thank you Hazwan. let's move to issue foreign direct investment first issue is policy issue as we know in india fdi quite restrictive foreign ownership of between 51 and 100 percent of stocks still requires a lengthy permission process from the government regulation of fdi in industry is required as streamlining of FDI procedure in infrastructure. For example, IKEA company was established in 2007 at Gurjan, India for office and attempt to open store in 2009 has been stopped by industry FDI restriction and IKEA applied authorization again in June 2012. After modification to India FDI guideline, however, IKEA had to wait another year before receiving Indian's, India government approval, approval to open store. Let's jump into the next issue. Second issue is inequitable pay rates. As we know, each country has standard wage rate. The issue when Walmart attempt to build to build a retail store in South Africa. Walmart opened opportunity to hire employees with low wage. Walmart meet with massive protests by union and government department, leading to a lower wage which may impact unemployment in future. That's all for me. Let's go to the next part. Go Kiha. Go Kiha. Thanks Aoni. So um, the issue that I had researched is string and labor law and the facts is large firms in India are not allowed to lay off or lay off any employees or close units without the permission of the state government and the point is the law was enacted with the aim of monitoring layoff and unfair layoff in fact it has become provision for job security in large privately owned firms for example India has a slew of laws and rules that shape the labor market, regulating the terms of work, hiring and firing, and the working conditions. For example, Starbucks at Tata Airlines Company. Tata Airlines Company is the company which comes from India and have a collaboration with Starbucks. 
So the next point is equity challenge. The first is India is definitely developing in a much faster pace now than before but in spite of that it can be identified that development have taken place unevenly. This means that while the more urban areas have, have been taped, the poor sections are inadequately exploited. And the point is, to get the complete picture of growth, it is essential to make sure the rural section has more or less the same development um, as the urbanized ones, thus fostering social equality and at the same time, a balanced economic growth. And for example, um, Japan TFE company want to buy BN stake in TSW Steel, which is steel company in India. GFE will cap its shareholding in GSW at 40.99% because a shareholding of 50% triggers an open offer to all shareholders. The GFE GSW deal is the largest foreign direct investment or, or FDI in the metal space in India and the third largest involving a Japanese company and an Indian partner after the Daichi Renbetsi and Dokomo Tata deals uh, and that is a Japan company. So that's all from me. I will pass to Alif, uh, next presenter, to present uh, our next point of issue. He is Alif Imran Bialman and today I will be presenting about corruption and tax rate. So, corruption includes extortion, bribery, fraud, influence, and favoritism, and it is happening all over the world. So, how does this affect FDI? It affects the inward flows of foreign direct investment and harm the economic growth of the country. As example, Enron scandal involved of the books, accounting, and fake holding. So, the scandal began with Enron misdeed in the video rental chains. It all happened when a blockbuster helped the company break into VOD market. VOD stands for Video On Demand. So since entering the market, the company overstated their earning growth. For example, the company used special purpose vehicle to hide toxic assets and huge debt. Next is tax rate. First, high corporate tax rate. High corporate tax rates are one of the biggest issues challenged of foreign countries. Usually, the corporate tax rate in East Asia are only between 50 to 30 percent. But when foreign countries want to do business in India, they will, assist, they will charge assistive tax rates to the foreign enterprise. As an example, the Coca Cola company discovered that carbonated soft drinks are subject to a 40 percent excise tax when they want to do business in foreign countries, which is in India. The reason the assistive tax imposed to the Coca-Cola company because of the public health want to limit the consumption of sugar and reduce associated health risks. Next is complicated tax system. Complicated tax system can sometimes be a barrier to international investors to invest with foreign countries and a highly complex tax system may impose costs in firms that have to understand and comply with all the various requirements. You guys, so I would like to summarize six issues of our FDI. So thank you for the previous presenter, my fellow friend, my dearest friend. So um, let's move up to the first two issues, which is policy issues and um, equitable period. So we have two company, the huge company, which is uh, IKEA and also Walmart. So let's go to IKEA. So IKEA have uh, policy issues in the market. They are so strict because of um, you know, Indian market and IKEA want to enter Indian market in 2013 but they have to postpone to one year because of they have to get an authorization and approve from Indian market. That's why they have that policy issues. Next is a Walmart. Walmart they have a quitable periods because of they want to build in the uh, they want to build a store at uh, South Africa as you guys know South Africa is a third world country so they kind of like uh, issues of uh, equitable period because uh, African people they ha had a huge um, you know like huge uh, problem with money and also food so like they they think that African people think um, the Walmart pay uh, big as a 
in America, but actually they give a normal witch, the, the light witch. So they ha that's why they have the, the issue. Hi, so let's move out to our um, third and fourth issue. So we have straight labor law and limited resources. So they have two companies which is Tata AIA and JSW Steel. So they have issue in India. They both have issue in India. So straight labor law, as you guys know, uh, previous issue, they actually have a strict policy. So also in straight labor law, they have also strict policy in that straight labor law. So Indian company not allowed uh, lay off for their employee. That's so that is so strict for them and also job change because of the market demand. So as you know, like international company they have a so on demand. So that's why uh Tata AI have a uh, issue something like that. And the second one is limited JSW steel. As you guys know, um in India they have so many business and they have textile business, they have steel business, they have coupon business and so on. So let's go to the steel business. So why they have a limited resources? Because of significant uh, workforce and also availability to fix all capital or and work. Because of the workforce, so they have available to fix the capitals. You know capital is the interest for uh, the company, so that's why. And the last point is workforce toward India. So <clears throat> they have to force their employee to work to get the capital. So there's kind of limited resources, kind of that because of the workforce. Last two issue is the corruption and also tax rate. As you guys know, Coca-Cola company and also an uh, Enro company. So, uh, in Enro company, they have corruption, like, um, and also in India, government crisis impact, effect of Indian's market, one of the main reasons, and also subsidies, food distribution to the poor. So, as you guys know, India, there's so many um, people that uh, don't have any kind of work, don't have... Uh, uh, place to live, so they they kind of has corruption um, uh, crisis. To move on to the tax rate in Coca Cola, so challenging for foreign uh, country to come invest with India. So as you guys know, India have so many so many kind of uh, problem because of they are so huge business in there. So nineties, uh, India has sent confusing signal to investor by uh, adoptly receiving it tax and tariff policy so they have kind of issue because of that thank you so much they all for me thank you to nadiana it's going to be conclusion and recommendation so for the conclusions as we can see foreign direct investment have many issue like policy and restrictive labor in labor law in india inequitable periods in South Africa, corruption and inflations. So for the recommendation, uh, in my opinion, we as foreign company must follow host country rules to make our business run smoothly. Second, as government, we must provide the best decision we make to the foreign company like win-win situations because foreign company they are one invests in our country lots of benefit uh, when government give opportunities to do foreign direct investments that's all from us thank you